Hi, we're continuing on with our series on garlic, and here I'm doing crushed garlic. Um, so that's obviously different from the whole garlic cloves that we did with the chicken and also the sliced garlic. As you can see here, I'm just crushing with a garlic crusher. You can chop it very finely if you want as well. I always find with my garlic crusher that I get all these bits stuck at the end. So I actually, well, it's not what not, chop these up. There's nothing wrong with those. And slide those in as well. We are going into cold olive oil. So I wanted to show you um, how garlic can be cooked from cold in oil on a really low heat and how that even flavouring, I've got my spoon, how that even flavouring of garlic and the pungency of the garlic permeates through the olive oil and it browns much more evenly. And into this, so we're making a pomodoro sauce basically, um, a really simple, amazing sauce that's so easy to do that you can use in garlic, you can use it in a, you can use it with pasta, it has got garlic in it, you can use it with pasta or you can use it um, as a base for uh, meatballs, any sort of tomato, uh, any Italian base really. Um, so here I've got two basil leaves, at this point I'm also going to put the basil leaves in here. Okay, so you can see how it's coming up. So when we made the sliced garlic with uh, for the dharga that went into hot oil. So they started browning almost straight away. And they could handle it because they were slightly bigger cloves. So that we had sliced those as opposed to crushed them. Obviously these are crushed, so the molecules in the garlic release their flavors um, more easily and they are more pungent if you crush garlic so you can see it's coming up um, do you use a heavy based saucepan if you can because we are going to cook this down for a while and the heat is more evenly distributed in a heavy based saucepan you're less likely to burn so the garlic is just lightly beginning to turn colour. Can you see? I don't know if you can see that. Obviously, the bits that are more fine are going to brown faster. And obviously, the ones that are not covered with the olive oil are going to suffer a little bit more. Um, so we're just waiting for that to come up. Um, and if you put, what we want to do is soften these and then slightly color them. So they're beginning to get a lovely golden brown, but a soft brown. So some of them are brown, some of them are still a little bit white. So at the moment I've got four crushed garlic cloves in here and about two tablespoons of, I use extra virgin olive oil because I really like uh, the depth of flavour that it gives. Right, so we are at a nice stage here. See, the basil is also released. I am using a bottle of crushed tomatoes, but you can use a bottle, uh, or you use two cans of plum tomatoes. You just need to work a bit harder to break those down. Um, and I'm going in with another two leaves of basil. Okay, and I am going in with salt. So it's about a teaspoon of salt in there. And we will just let this cook. So again, the oil is permeating through the tomato. The basil leaves are in there as well. So you've got the basil, the fresh basil with the, alongside the uh, cooked basil that I put in earlier. So this needs to just cook on a low heat. I'm gonna cover it and we'll come back to it when it's ready. Okay. All right, we're continuing with um, garlic. So this is the final garlic 
um, episode. So we have, this was the crushed garlic. So this is finished, this has been cooking slowly um, for about 40, 45 minutes. Um, I did check it, I did taste it, so it's very important to taste because it entirely depends on your tomatoes, the tins or your bottles or fresh tomatoes as well. This really works best with tinned tomatoes or the bottled passata crushed tomatoes, I find. Um, that sometimes you need a little bit of sweetener in it, so you add a little bit of um, sugar or honey or maple syrup if you prefer. Um, and I also seasoned it, I thought it needed a little bit more salt um, and pepper, so I put that in. And then this is done. So this makes quite a lot, you cool it down, you freeze it, it freezes really well. Um, I always love, if you have been cooking something for a considerable amount of time, Sometimes the freshness of what you put in the beginning goes. So I always feel like adding some fresh herb that uh, reflect what you put in at the beginning. So in this case, basil, it really brings the whole thing alive again. Um, the other thing that I quite like, if you like, um, is that you can just add some chili flakes on top. You can add this at the beginning as well. Um, if you are using this um, as a base, where everyone will eat it and you know some people don't like chili in the beginning you could put slices of red chili in it if you want that will really infuse the flavor of chili throughout but you can also use chili flakes at the end um, and actually you know give them on the table so those that want to zhush up their meal a bit with some spice they can use the chili flakes and those that don't they don't have to so uh, that's garlic <laughs>